Aaron here from Goddard Adventure. As you saw in our last video, we're working with HRG on a new lift for our Honda Passport. As you can see, I've got a mock-up already made that could be what it looks like. As you can also see, we've got a problem. Our tires are looking pretty puny. So now I've got to figure out what tires to buy for this build. This video is going to walk you through my thought process and where I'm leaning. I'm also making this video to get your feedback, so if you have a favorite tire or have a recommendation, please put it in the comments below. I hope you enjoy. For any off-road enthusiast, tires are one of the best upgrades you can make to your vehicle. There's a lot of variables to consider, however, and it can make choosing the right tire very difficult. In this footage, you can see a stock tire on a stock large 20-inch uh, wheel uh, having trouble finding traction. Generally speaking, for off-road use, you want to have the smallest wheel and the most rubber that you can fit. There are advantages such as armoring against uh, nicking your wheel. Uh, also, when you air down with larger rubber profile, it creates a cushion effect that helps protect the tire from popping and helps uh, morph it to the terrain around it, giving you better traction. This epic hill climb right here really showed off how much shock absorption was built into our aired down 31 inch tires. If it wasn't for our tires, our suspension and wheels would have lifted way more often. At the end of this run, we actually hit a stump and our tire takes the brunt of the hit just absorbing it and actually climbing over the stump. Truly impressive. While our Yokohama G003 mud trains were insanely good off-road and in the mud, they weren't as good on road and actually wore uh, to be very, very noisy. I still think they're one of the sharpest tires on the market, and I could see maybe putting these on our new rig but they haven't made the short list. Another thing to note is the size of a tire. These were the max size you could pretty much fit on our pilot. They were about 31.7 inches and barely fit, really stuffing the wheel well and massively altering our uh, crawl ratio at low end. As you guys know, if you follow the channel, we've since switched back to um, a less aggressive tire that has better on-road manners and a smaller diameter to help with that gearing issue on the first gen Honda Pilots. This leads us back to our Honda Passport. With the new lift from HRG, potentially having a whopping four and a half inches of lift, what size tire will look right? What size tire will have the best overall performance? With our Honda platforms, we're looking at a compromise we value the on-road performance and the off-road performance. So with that, let's take a look at the potential tire sizes, especially considering that we have 18 inch wheels. These wheels actually limit your tire choice pretty significantly, but it's what we have. So let's take a look. For transparency, I am planning on running a 32 to 33 inch tire. Both these tire sizes will require trimming of the wheel well and cutting some metal on the uh, back end side of the wheel well. I'm planning on following guidance from John DZ and others who have gone this route before me. And I've been told that with a little bit of bravery, it's not impossible. The stock tire size of the Honda Passport 2024 Trail Sport is 29.6 inches in diameter approximately. As you can see, I've got the first and most common uh, 18 inch wheel tire size that could fit. It's the 255-70 R18. This is approximately a 32.1 inch tire and it nets us a little over an inch of lift, which is pretty exciting. Moving on to the next tire size comparison, I would like to show you the tire that I would prefer to run. It's not a conventional tire though. It's what you'd call a pizza cutter. It's a super thin diameter or a width tire. I find that these types of tires let you run a taller tire with less rotational mass. I find that they dig through mud and clay and kind of find the hard 
surface below, while at the same time allowing you to air down and still float on top of sand. Unfortunately, this 235-80 R18 size is not really on the market. Apparently, the KO3 is going to be released in this size, but not until next year. Next, we'll move on to the tire size that John DZ is running. It is a 265-70 R18, and it gives you a little bit more height. Looks like uh, on top of the 255-70 R18, it gives you 0.3 more inches of lift. Um, this would be the max size that I would be looking at. It also gives you 0.4 inches of additional width on the tread. For me personally, when you add width to the tread, I find that you float on top of slick stuff more often. So I'm not really looking at that as an advantage for me. It would be an advantage in soft sand. So now we have our contenders for the tire of choice. Starting off, we have the same tire that I'm running on the Honda Pilot. This is also the same tire that John DZ runs. It's the Toyo Open Country AT3. And I will say, just like John DZ says, it's not the sharpest looking tire, but it does seem to just perform. We've noticed on our tires that we haven't really been chipping them, uh, that they seem to have really good tire wear, that they run really quietly, also that they're pretty lightweight. For our Honda Passport build, the one thing I will knock them for is that the tread depth is only uh, 13 30 seconds of an inch, which is on the, the shorter side for these off-road tires. Um, and so I am looking to add a tire to the Passport that has a little bit sharper looks and a little bit more tread. So next on the list, we have the Falcon Wild Peak AT4W. Um, I'm lumping in the AT3W as well, um, kind of together, though the Falcon Wild Peak AT4W is the new tire. Um, they do have better looking sidewalls than the AT3 uh, just previous, um, but this tire also suffers from a shallow tread depth. Um, in this tire size, it only comes in the SL load range, just like the AT3s before. Um, and that limits the tread depth um, to only 13, 30 seconds as well. Um, this tire weighs 10 pounds more, approximately, than the um, Toyo before it. While having the same tread depth, I am sure that it has uh, more plies and is probably a tougher, much tougher tire. Um, unfortunately, the tire ply information is kind of hard to find. I'm ruling this one out though because the tread design uh, looks like it'd be great on road, great in snow, great in rain, uh, great on uh, you know rocky surfaces. But I'm looking for something that also suits the swamps here in South Carolina. So that leads me to the last two contenders in the all terrain or rugged terrain kind of. Uh, series. And this Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack RT is the new version of the Goodyear Duratrack. I had the previous Duratrack on my Pilot, and I will say it did really well in the mud. Um, and this new tire has a pretty good looking sidewall. I think this would be a great fit for the Passport, um, at least to try. It's got um, a little bit more voids in it than the average all-terrain tire, while still having a lot of siping and also being severe snow rated, which is something that I'm looking to have with the tire I choose. This tire is um, definitely heavier than the previous two. It is 46 pounds. It has 16 30 seconds of tread depth, so a much deeper tread depth. Um, and it also uh, it comes with a heavier um, tire rating. It's the XL range, uh, which gives you um, basically uh, probably more sidewall stiffness. Um, this tire could be the one that I settle on, uh, but I haven't quite decided yet. This leads me to the one that's kind of sticking out to me at least uh, for our build. It seems to have a good off-road rugged look. It seems to have a good compromise between rain and on-road performance and off-road performance. It's slightly lighter than the Duratrack sitting in at 45 pounds per tire. And it also has a 16 32nd inch uh, tread depth, which is going to look pretty sharp. 
Um, this is also an XL range uh, tire. Um, one thing to note is I was trying to stay away from E-rated tires um, for the Passport. I just think they're going to be overkill. Um, so trying to keep the tire weight to uh, 50 pounds or less per tire, I think is really going to help uh, keep the pilot more nimble on the road and, uh, you know, keep some of that acceleration performance that's so sweet. Um, but yeah, this is the one that I'm leaning towards getting. It's cheaper than the Duratrack or Duratrack. Um, and um, I think it has pretty good looks. Um, so what I'd like is for you guys to let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Let me know if you have experience with either of the, any of these tires. If you think I'm making a mistake with my logic here, uh, please let me know. I appreciate you guys for following the build. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.